J'invite maintenant Monsieur John Daly. Nominat membro de la Commission européenne, le Conseil européen, pour le vote et l'approbation du Parlement européen. Je voudrais vous congratuler au nouveau élu Collège des Commissaires et à M. le Président Barroso, à tous vous. Congratulations. 700 000 personnes mourent de la tabac. Et je suis responsable pour les citoyens. Following a fraud investigation, EU Commissioner for Health and Consumer Policy John Daly has resigned with immediate effect. We see now that a health commissioner has been sparked out of the Commission under accusations of being involved in the tobacco industry because he was accused of taking out a bribe of 30 million euros. Nobody of us smoke, I, I, I think, I hope. Eh? I am uh, using uh, e-cigarettes. Which, which are as bad as the others. Okay, bare lige for at få styr på det grundlæggende. Her er John Daly. Han kommer fra Malta. Han er født i 1948. I 2010 blev han gjort til sundhedskommissær for den europæiske union. Det vil sige, at han får ansvar for mere end 500 millioner menneskers velfærd og sundhed. På hans skrivebord ligger udkastet til det nye tobaksdirektiv. Det handler om altså, milliarder af euro og, siger John Daly, tusindvis af menneskeliv. John Daly vil have et hårdt direktiv, og derfor er tobaksindustrien selvfølgelig imod John Daly. Men det direktiv skal han køre i garagen, og bedst som det går i oktober 2012, bliver han kaldt op på kontoret hos José Manuel Barroso, formanden for kommissionen, til et møde, og så bliver han fyret. Before all this started, I had a meeting with Barroso in his office. It's the usual meeting that commissioners have with the president. And at the end, Barroso said, well, you know, this tobacco directive, he said, we're having a lot of problems with it. He said, I said, don't you think we should forget it? I said, listen, I have a commitment with the, with the European citizen, and I will not stop. Få dage før Barroso smider John Daly ud af kommissionen, har han modtaget en hemmelig rapport om John Daly. Og rapporten, som er her, ville stadig være hemmelig den dag i dag, hvis den ikke var blevet lægget til pressen. Af rapporten fremgår det, at John Daly har holdt en række ikke-deklarerede møder med tobakslobbyister på Malta, nærmere bestemt lobbyister fra det kæmpe store svenske tobaksfirma Swedish Match, som producerer røgfri tobak. Det, der på svensk hedder snus, som ser sådan her ud. Det er det, man putter op under læben. Ja. Barroso har startet undersøgelsen af John Daly, fordi at kommissionen har fået et tip fra tobaksindustrien om, at John Daly er korrupt. Og det gør han ved at sætte Olaf på sagen. Olaf er EU's antisvindelighed. Det er sådan en slags internal affairs. Det kan man sige. Det svir. Det er nikotin. Det er meget stærkt. Undersøgelsen af John Daly er så vigtig for Barroso, at han sætter Olafs øverste chef, Giovanni Kessler, til at stå for det. Do you remember the moment you are aware that you are under investigation? That I am under investigation is on that meeting I had with Kessler. And he is the head of Olaf? He is the head of Olaf. He came to my office unannounced. And what does he ask? About a meeting I had with a, uh, with a young lawyer, Gail Kimberly, here in Malta. And she is an advocate. She is an advocate from Malta and is on a war from the EU. Under sin overlov begynder hun at arbejde for Swedish Match. She was asking questions about uh, about tobacco, about snus. She was never registered as a lobbyist. She was not presented to me as a lobbyist. How would I to know that she is a lobbyist? Okay. And 
then he said, but then you made another appointment to meet her on the tent and you met on the tent. I said, no, you didn't meet on the tent. This meeting never happened. And there's something that shows that John Dalí has right. Here is Johan Gabrielsson. He is a lobbyist for Swedish Match. And in a bonded conversation with an EU parliament member, som jeg har her, der fortæller han det her. If you want to, I can tell you the story. No, no, I, I, I know that she wasn't in. I know he, he, she wasn't in the second meeting. But that I found out when Olaf told me. Så so Olaf, altså, siger til Johan Gabrielsson, at de ved, at der lige ikke var med til møde nummer to. Men det er jo et af Olafs vigtigste hovedanklager mod John Dalí. Men prøv så at høre her. We have been told to keep by Olaf that there is an investigation going okay. on in Malta. There is a bit so uh, certain. So keep your version. Yeah, yeah, keep your, to tell tell what you 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 have said to us and mm -hmm. what is your version because we have done an investigation. There is Maltese investigations. It would be preferably that this is not disturbed and this will definitely not help certain things that can come out. Så Olaf beder simpelthen Swedish match om at lyve. Yeah. Stick to the story. As a result of our investigation, it turned out that this Maltese entrepreneur organized over last last time uh, two meetings uh, with the commissioner uh, and representative of the uh, let's say Stuns companies. This is this is Kessler. You understand? He creates by inventing fraudulently this case. Og nu spiser det til for Olafs anden hovedanklage mod John Dalí er at han har sendt sin håndlanger Silvio Summit i byen for at lave en aftale med Swedish Match om at lempe i tobaksdirektivet til gengæld for at få 60 millioner euro. Og det skulle være sket til et møde på Silvio Summits pizzeria i Malta mellem Johan Gabrielsson fra Swedish Match, Gail Kimberly, lobbyisten og Silvio Summit. Now Silvio Summit is one of those people, okay? He was very active in the political party that I come from. And Kessler makes a lot that he's a close friend. You know, I never have any business with him, this guy. I never... He's a friend, you know, like many your, other friends in, in, in your Malta. local political network. Yes, yeah. in my local political network. I'm very interested in the meeting with Swedish Match when they come here. You're interested in that investment, yeah. okay? Can we walk through that meeting as it happens? Exactly. Um, of course, of course, we, we can. So, Gabrielsen, in the evening, he arrives here. Yes, he he said there. They sit here. Gabrielsson and Gail Kimberly, uh -huh. and they are talking. He said to me, what is what is uh, the proposal for this uh, lifting up of the ban? And that is the ban on smokeless tobacco? Yes, yes. yes. But then I said to him, it's 60 million. Yeah, you say it here? Yeah, yeah. And, and, but I need to understand, the 60 million euro, who was getting the 60 million euro? Was that you or Gail Kimberly or...? No, it's, it's for Gail Kimberly and myself, so we, we set up the, the lobby group. Men altså, helt bizarrt er jo Sammels historie om, at Swedish Match skulle betale 60 millioner euro til Gail Kimberly og Summit, som vil lave en lobbygruppe i Bruxelles. Dels fordi Swedish Match allerede har en lobbygruppe i Bruxelles, og dels fordi, at altså, Silvio Summit er en total nulbong, når det gælder politik, Bruxelles og tobak. Det, det giver simpelthen ikke mening. But I am doing what Gail is telling me to do. Yeah. But did they discuss that Mr. Dali would get a, a, a cut of the 60 million? Was, was that part of the deal? No, for sure, no, not from my side. I don't, I don't know nothing about this. But did you hear them talking about that? No, 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 no. We never talked about that. 
Hello, Ms. Kimberly. This is journalist Mats Brygger. I really need to speak with you. I also wrote you an email earlier today. Um, please give me a ring as soon as possible. I'm here in Malta. Hope to hear from you soon. Bye bye. Har du sms'et til hende? Ja. Har du e-mailet? Ja, ja. Hun svarer ikke. Hun svarer overhovedet ikke. Men prøv at høre. Vi skal have fat i hende. Ja, fordi hvis hun er hjernen bag, er hun jo også involveret i det, der følger nu, som er endnu vildere. For der sker det, at Olaf lægger en fælde for John Dali sammen med en lobbygruppe, som Swedish Match er med i, der hedder i stok hvor de ringer til Silvio Summit, mens Olof optager telefonsamtalen, for at få ham til at indrømme, at der er en forbindelse til John Dali. Så EU lægger en fælde for deres egen kommissær? Ja, måske endda sammen med tobaksindustrien. When she called me, she said to me, she didn't say, hello Silvio. She didn't say, how are you? She immediately said, Uh, how much would you charge us to meet Mr. Dali? This telephone call was made from the offices of Olaf. So it was recorded on Olaf equipment in the presence of Olaf personnel. It was an entrapment. It was an entrapment and it was illegal. As a result of our investigation, it turned out that there is no conclusive evidence of the direct participation of Commissioner John Daly as instigator or mastermind of the operation of requesting money for changing a decision of the Commission. You know, it was, it was stated in the report that there was no corruption. Mm. There is no corruption whatsoever. Okay, the report simply states, okay, that I was not involved in creating this, uh, this discussions, okay? I was not involved in these discussions. It's, Olaf states this, but he concludes, I must have known. C'était pour moi évident qu'après le rapport de Olaf, c'était impossible pour Monsieur Dali de continuer euh, responsable de ce portefeuille dans la commission, qui ne pourrait plus continuer à la commission, puisqu'il avait, avait eu des contacts irréguliers avec le lobby du tabac. What is the essence of all of this? The essence of all of this was that I was kicked out of the picture. The directive was passed through, but in a diluted, diluted form. So you feel like you are a victim I am of a, a setup? Victim. I am a victim of a setup by the tobacco company who wanted me out. So the winner of this is tobacco. Way, tobacco wins. Tobacco wins. Olaf, which investigates fraud within the EU institutions, has been in the spotlight ever since former health commissioner John Daly had to resign due to bribe accusations in 2012. Later though, Olaf itself and its director, Giovanni Kessler, came under fire due to the Daly investigation, which was said to violate EU regulation. Der lige siger, at han har noget nyt i sagen. Ja. Så man ikke vil sige, hvad over telefonen eller på mail, men at vi skulle komme til Malta hurtigst muligt. Og så er chefen for Olof, det er jo Kessler, jo kommet i, øh, i fedtefadet. Han har fået fjernet sin immunitet af kommissionen. Som jo på en eller anden måde er en revanchering af John Daly, ikke? Men det kan jo ikke være det, han vil tale med os om. Så, so, Mr. Dali, um, it's almost a year since we saw each other last time? It is, uh -huh. Yeah. Time flies. And, and what has happened since we met? Well, quite a lot happened since we met. Um, uh, 
the most important thing for me is that my wife died. My condolences. Um, she died from a massive heart attack. Again, I believe in God's providence as well. And uh, this became manifest some uh, couple of weeks ago. Out of the blues, I received an email by a person unknown, which said basically that, listen, I have in my hands documentation and tapes that show the corruption of Barroso and the commission in your case. How they were colluding with the tobacco industry to take you out of the way. Yeah, I understand. Hör du, wer der Hans hier? Ja. Hör du das? Ja. The first email was received on the 5th of September and it said, Hi, I prefer to remain anonymous if you will respect this, sir. So there will be no phone calls, please. I have a package of large volume files about Jose Manuel Barroso and representatives of a powerful tobacco lobby in the US and continental Europe. These documents will shake Europe, massive fraud and espionage. These documents will shake Europe? Europe. Massive fraud and espionage will be sent by courier only. 3,000 euros to my email, so, so, and so. The person's name on the email is Maria Zamora. Maria, Maria Zamora. Maria Zamora. Zamora. Okay. So, too good to be true in reality. Then I reply, dear Ms. Zamora, I would very much like to examine this material and this is why I invite you to spend a weekend break in Malta at my expense so that we can meet confidentially and review the matter. Ans answered on the fifth. This is to confirm to you that I have no affiliation whatsoever with Giovanni. And even this, you know, so, she starts calling him Giovanni. So she uses the first name of Uses Kessler. the first name of Kester. What does that say? that say that she has a, 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 either she knew him well, she worked with him oh, that closely. She, that she has been going in the hallways of power in Brussels. That's right. I also reveal here that this matter has been considered a matter of life and death by some people. A matter of life and death? Yeah, it is a life and death. If this is true what she's saying. It is life and death, no doubt about it. I checked the pieces of evidence again and found a recorded conversation where your possible elimination was discussed at some point. Not too sure what it meant, but the exact wordings are, we can get him out of the equation. A recorded? We can get him out of the equation. A recorded conversation. We can get him out of the equation. This was the last email you received? Yes. And, the, and have you written to that not, person not since? Not yet, not yet. So w this is where we are now? Exactly. I mean, as a, I'm just saying something in Danish. Go, 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 go. I think that we should foreslå om if can send some kind of evidence that he or she has material. Some kind of smell. Hvis vi kan få den, så skal vi så foreslå et møde hurtigst muligt. Ja. Øh, hvor vi så flyver ned sammen med John Dali. Og så sender vi i forvejen 3.000 euro. Så det er også der betale? Ja. Yeah. I'm saying, Mr. Dali, that if this is true, we will wire, Michael and I, 3,000 euros to her PayPal account. 
Okay, but if, if we know that she really, or he really has this package, mm -hmm. then things will become easier. I tell her, after your last email, I have the person whom I can fully trust to complete the transaction, okay? This is uh, extremely exciting. What do you think I'm feeling? I mean, I'm feeling not only excited, but this is, I regain my life yes. and the life of my children. If this is true, this is like a rebirth for me because they've destroyed our lives, these people. Jeg kunne ikke falde i søvn i går, fordi jeg var så fyldt med adrenalin over det, der skete. Ja, men nu kommer det, der sker nu. Fordi han skriver, I have reply. Han har fået svar. Han har fået svar. Og hvad skriver han mere? Han har kun skrevet det. Er der kommet svar? Good afternoon, nice to see you. Hello. Hi. 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 So you left us yesterday. I left you yesterday. We were extremely excited. I'm going to write to the Malta police. You want to write to the police? Yes, 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 yes. Wait, 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 wait. Tell them I received these. The email, the first, the first one I received. I'm not going to give them any of the other details. Okay? And tell them, listen, I'm going to send her the money. And I'm writing to you so that there will not be any misunderstanding. Okay? About about the section. And I've decided to send her the money. And see what happens. The worst case scenario is I will lose three thousand euros. You do not prefer that we put forward the money? No, no, it's it, it, it's better like this, okay? I tell you what, so that I will not involve third parties. So we'll see. I mean, I, I'm going to take the plunge. Okay, this is what I decided. I'm going to take the plunge. If it's a scam, I lose 3,000 euros. If it's true, we've won the lottery. Mm -hmm. You are recognized, she tells me, as an influential and respected member of society in Malta and in Europe. Yes. The documents are deep. Deep? I think detailed is what she, what she means. And we are aware Mr. Barroso received tobacco money through DNB Bank of Norway. That is very detailed. So this is, <laughs> this is quite an interesting detail. DN... DNB Bank of Norway. DNB Bank. Could we write it now? What? To speed up things, you know, do it now and, and wait for the answer. She's answering yes. very fast. Okay. But I, I'm, I'm just thinking what is actually happening now, you know. You will contact the police. I've already sent him a, a, an email to tell you the truth. To the police? To the police, yes. Unfortunately, I am still a smoker. And, and if ever I would be needing a cigarette, it is now. So I will just go out there and smoke no, a cigarette? You can do it. You can, you can. I, I'm a non alcoholic, but I, I really need a stiff drink. Okay. <laughs> you can have a stiff drink. I'll just have a, a double whiskey. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not far. Who wants, who wants a, a, a whiskey? Matt? You have a whiskey? No, it's fine. Hvad tænker du? Det er mærkeligt det med, jeg at vi føler mig på går, og så lige pludselig så vil han betale, og han har involveret politiet. Okay. How oh, good? I think the uh, the storm is coming up. Yeah. This is not the storm yet. If, it's, if, if the storm hits, then it will hit. Uh... What, since we met yesterday, what made you change your mind about? 
you directly paying the source? No, because I thought of this way yes. to eliminate the possibility of an entrapment. Look, I'll inform the police I'm doing it, and I'm in the clear. Yes. So I scratched that out, that, possi mm. that possibility. And if you have the material, will you have a press conference here? We'll see, because then I, uh, then I, I will. <laughs> Oh. It's one of the, it's a it's a, it's a thunder. Oh. <laughs> didn't you didn't you see it? <laughs> you want another one? <laughs> <laughs> Understand your apprehension. Rest assured that your safety will be guaranteed. Okay. I decided to pay you the expenses as requested by you and will arrange to pay into your PayPal account today. When will you mail the documents? What method will you use? I will send you the, the mailing address mailing address once you confirm. Okay? Yes. Send. You sent, sent it now? It's sent? Sent. Okay. Now we're waiting. Now we're waiting. For an answer. <sighs> For but I mean, we, we can wait as long as the music is... Is playing? This beautiful and uh, yeah. it's raining outside. We, we can wait all the evening. The rain I love, you know. I love this atmosphere. Yes of raining. So we have an answer. Okay. Dear sir. Thank you for your understanding. The earliest the package can be shipped will be Friday because we will have to gather all the documents from a safe archive. And this might take a couple of days or so. Once you confirm, I will ensure the package is promptly sent on Friday. Let me have the confirmation on your side. We'll keep you informed. This is very straightforward. A better straightforward. Now we are in action. You know, now things yes. are happening. I mean, this is, this is it. Incredible. Wait, I mean... <laughs> Monday, if, if this is true, Monday I should have the information. Monday, if it's true, you will have a package of the most exclusive political material... In the world. In the world. Yes. So, yeah, no package. So, no package arrived. No package arrived. Okay. I would have wished a package arrived, but uh, no package arrived. Yeah, so would we. Did the source give any explanation to why the package has not arrived? No, no, no. They didn't give any explanation. In fact, they turned very, very aggressive. Aggressive? Uh, aggressive. Yeah. They were asking. Uh, for more money and uh, practically trying to blackmail. But, uh, you know, I never gave in to blackmail, therefore nothing, nothing really okay. happened. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Hvad, hvad, hvad gør vi nu? Det ved jeg ikke. Jamen, prøv, prøv, vi, vi, vi skal lige ind og holde hovedet koldt nu. Vi bliver nødt til at forstå, hvad det er, der er sket. Ja. Ikke? Kan vi gå tilbage? Mm. Sluk cigaretten. This is what happened. Uh, I was expecting the package, but uh, I received a phone call from from this man who called himself Dimitri from the uh, from the Red Brigades, I think he said, to order me to pay 30.000 euros. I don't know who Dimitri is, but so, he, su he sounded very Russian. You have one hour to confirm bank transaction, or it will be Armageddon for you tomorrow. But I mean, this is a this is really um, an aggressive uh, threat towards you. It is aggressive. The, 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 mm -hmm. This is the aggressiveness. Very aggressive. Again, and the reason was to try to to intimidate me. But how do you feel when your father is uh, threatened? I am afraid that uh, they might do something to to him. I mean, we are put in a very dangerous situation. Situ I, mean, it's, uh... I understand your, your feelings, mm. but I have a proposal that, I, and I think it should be you doing it, that you would try just once again writing Dimitri and saying... I prefer to put pressure on the police, okay, and have them make the contact, not me. But they are not doing anything. But, they, but if Dimitri still have, you know, some kind of evidence... Yeah, if he has some kind of evidence, he, he's not going to give it. Dimitri has been playing a game, whoever he is, and the game, which was not going, was which was, did, was not intending to do me any good. One way or the other, he wanted some results mm -hmm. that would put me, put me in a bad light. But this means then that then it, it is Michael and I who should be trying to contact Dimitri. No, Dimitri. no, it's the police, not Michael and you. But you, you know, you you said earlier that you had a, you have a little. Flame of hope. But do you realize that I, I, I'm dealing with criminals now? Yes. Uh, no, I think forget it, I think tomorrow, tomorrow, I, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, I will, I, I will, I will uh, put pressure on the police. Jeg har ikke sagt til dig, men jeg skrev tidligere dag en e-mail til Maria Samoros e-mailadresse, eller Dimitris e-mailadresse. Hvorfor det? Fordi jeg synes, der skulle ske noget. Uh, er du sikker på, at det her det er klogt? So, and then I wrote, um, I am interested in the package you have for sale. Please respond. Okay. Maybe it was a mistake? It was a mistake, but then how? Let's carry on. But it happened. Uh, then... But it was not our agreement when we left here. But I thought, in my, um, uh, in uh, my okay. Go ahead. twisted logic, maybe, I thought it was the in same my, as you calling. You shouldn't have taken initiative, I think. But then how? Okay. But, uh, You're only seeing the story. But I became very angry about it. And my, so whatever. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not pointing fingers at No, but, but, but I actually should not have because been Because I didn't know. But then okay. I, I didn't know. But carry I mean, I didn't know that you did it. Let's see what happened. Then Maria Samora writes back to me. Not possible Tuesday night in Malta or Denmark. And that is where we are. Han er you should have told me we're going to do that. I'm very sorry. Han er rasende. Hvem skal du til? Jeg skal til Dimitri. Come on, stop. Må jeg se, hvad du skriver? Hvad? Hvorfor skriver du til ham? Fordi vi er nødt til at få fat i den pakke. Vi er, hvis vi er nødt til at have den pakke. Han blev pisse sur over, at du skrev til Dimitri. Hvis du bliver ved med det der, så vil John da lige heller ikke tale med os. Og så har vi ingen skid. Daphne? Daphne? Caruana Galicia. Ja. Hun, er, øh, hun har været journalist for Målsa Independent. Det er hun vist stadigvæk. 
Og så skriver hun så en blog. Under Malta Independence Hat. Som næsten altså kun handler om John Dali. Well, John Dali was um, originally quite a well-respected politician in Malta. Um, I'm talking as far back as 1987. And he won the respect of a lot of people because he took decisive action at a time when Malta's economy and Malta generally was in a real mess. And then slowly and slowly there began to be whisperings and um, conversations, private conversations, about how corrupt he is. He was the minister responsible for privatization of state entities in Malta, including the banks, the airport. And there were these sort of um, undercurrents um, about his involvement, his maybe taking a cut. The opposition at the time, which was the Labour Party, used to call him, in fact, Johnny Cash, because he had such a reputation for going after money. But yet, you know, mm -hmm. still no really no smoking gun. No, there's no smoking gun. Eventually, um, the Nationalist Prime Minister made what I consider to be, and many people consider to be, a fatal error, which was to um, nominate him as Malta's commissioner, European commissioner, so as to get him off, off, off his island. own back and off the island, he exported the problem and inflicted it on a European-wide level in the European Commission. Incredible. He was at an EU Commission, European Commission meeting in Cyprus, and um, he made his excuses and left. He wasn't present for one of the most important dinners. He told the, his European Commission colleagues that he was flying back to Malta because he had family problems. But he didn't go back to Malta at all. He went to the Bahamas. I know why he went, because I spoke to the Americans who were there in the Bahamas. They sent me that photo. So that is um, Marie Louise Corbin, she's known as Lady Bird. That is John Daly, um, John Daly's daughter, Louisa Daly. So this man standing at the back, um, he represents the Christian, the man here in blue shirt who's standing. He represents a Christian organization. Yes. I've tried to understand why Lady Bird would have asked this man, Michael, to fly um, fly to the Bahamas to meet John Daly. And afterwards I realised it was to win his confidence because she was taking his friend's money, the money from the other people in the Christian group. So you have, in, in, a, in a villa in <laughs> Nassau, you have Lady Bird. The fraudster. Christians from America. Yes. Mm -hmm. Meeting and with John Daly, a European commissioner. A, a European commissioner. That yes, is extraordinary. Exactly. Yes, it is extraordinary. Hvad fanden er det vi er gang? Altså. Men det er jo sindssygt, fordi i, i, i går troede jeg, at vi var i gang med og afsløre en ondskab, som ville altså, fremkalde en politisk revolution og, og, og redde EU fra sin undergang. Det, det var min følelse efter alt det med John Daly og den hemmelige kilde. Og nu har jeg det som om, at jeg er spændt for en vogn, som er på vej til helvede. Men så må han jo tro, at vi er virkelig dumme. Det er vi måske også. Men, men det er jo vores store fordel, Michael. Det er jo vores store fordel, at han tror, vi er idioter. For han havde jo aldrig lukket hende ind. Så tæt på ham, som vi er på ham.
the eight Christian Americans that you represent who were scammed by Lady Bird and possibly also John Daly? The, the upstate eight folks were involved in the gold pool. In other words, they put their monies together in order to create a larger sum of money in order to get a bigger investment back. Investment into what? The gold mines. And these gold mines, where, where are they? In uh, Africa. Is there, in fact, any mining going on? I couldn't tell you for sure. And, and Lady Bird is the architect behind this? Yes. Seaview Beach. 256. Are there anybody living in there now? The, the ah. house stairs. Ah, you can walk in. Ah, John stayed on the couch with Louisa. To me, it was, Louisa was kind of like a puppet, so to speak. You know, if her dad said, do this, she would do it. You know? Or if LB said, do this, she would do it. Other than that, she didn't do anything. So she was like the servant of Lady Bird and her father? Yeah. There's the rocking chair the Lady Bird stayed in. And she would come out and go to her chair. And from there, people fixed her food or drinks, whatever. In the beginning, I thought John Dolly was really 100%. A hundred percent what? Uh, for real. You know, the, you know you, you got to remember, we were being told the Lady Bird was part of this gold family. I also picked up the uh, this Dragon family's uh, confirmation of identity for you. Did, did Lady Bird claim to be, you know... She was, she was introduced to us as the granddaughter of the Asian family's uh, matri patriarch. And that John Dolly was her right-hand person. She didn't do anything unless John Dolly said it was okay. Mm. So you know, that gave us validity for John Dolly and for Lady Bird. Did you discuss these gold families with John Dolly? Yes. Prøv det helt. Det er jo helt gagak. This thing goes so deep, I can't possibly remember everything to tell you. It keeps coming up. Um, her real name is Marie Eloise Corbin. She's a US citizen. She changes her identity every so often. And in fact, um, I received copies of um, an identity card she uses, a Filipino passport. It's ridiculous because there's her face and she's clearly a Western woman with blonde hair and blue eyes and very Western features and with a Filipino name. What do we do now? Vi skal tilbage til Malta og have en alvorlig snak med John Daly. But I simply do not understand. We have in the ho house in the Bahamas this strange character known as Lady Bird. Yeah, for me, she was not strange. For, for, for me, she was somebody very buoyant. Did you know that she was using multiple identities? Oh, no, I don't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. Because she has names like Mary Swan, ma, Eloise Corbin. Ma, ma, I never, I never called her by any of those names. What did you call her? She was called Lady Bird. In, in the, in the Lady Bird, I mean, was her nickname, and we knew her as Lady Bird. You had no idea that she was a fraudster. No, I, no idea. And do you, do you believe her to be a fraudster today? I, I have no proof that she is a fraudster. They must have known she was a fraudster because she came to Malta out of a prison in Thailand 
and her, her documents did not show her real name. There is no way they could have not found out she was a fraudster. What about her being in prison in Thailand? I knew about that, and that was a question of um, uh, problems with her passport. Because of her fake identities? No, not, I don't know about fake identities. She was posing as a Philippine, using a Philippine passport? Um, I don't know the details, but I knew that it was something with her passport. What, what is this document showing? This was an annual audit, so at the end of December the 31st, okay? Janie, she shows that she has $55,583.32 um, transferred to Claire Gauchy Borda, John Dolly's daughter. And this is signed by John Dolly's daughter? Correct. Okay. One American is writing, my name is Janie B. Moore, uh -huh. and I wish to report a scam uh -huh. that I have been taken into yes. by a group in Malta. Yes. That's true, Daphne Caruana Galizia. She has, been, she has been contacted by Daphne Caruana Galizia. The ones and, I am... And, and brainwashed by her. Uh -huh. Complete. The ones... Continue. The ones I am aware of is Mary Swan, as known as Lady Bird, mm -hmm. and Claire Corsi Borda and mm -hmm. Luisa Dali. Mm -hmm. now, that must be you. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Uh -huh. I have sent 11 wire transfers to the uh -huh. HSBC in Malta uh -huh. for a total amount of $409,000. Mm -hmm. That's her life pension. We were told we were investing in gold and mm -hmm. other precious metals, mm -hmm. and we would receive 10% interest and a bonus at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Did they receive any, any interest? No. All the earnings was rolled over until I received a letter saying that Lady Bird was a fraudster and I had been say? taken in by a scam. This is all, okay? D, set up again by Kessler and Daphne Caruana Galizia, okay? These people were simply brainwashed. They, they lost their money. So, um, so many people lose their money. I mean, I have what, what, what the hell are you talking about? All wire transfers, yes, uh -huh. our so, payments uh -huh. to Malta, uh -huh. correspondence with uh -huh. Luisa Dali. You never had any correspondence with them, huh? That is not true. I, uh, you never corresponded with them. You're Daughters were involved in the management? So what? My daughters? daughters have, were they directors? My, listen, listen. My daughters have their own company and their own business. So what? But please... The, and, and Kessler is trying to make the point that because they use that address that I'm involved, which is completely stupid. Now, my question is, these uh, people uh, never met my, my father. Uh, what interest do these people have to uh, uh, do harm to my father? Let's stay on the, uh, the question your daughter asked. Why do these Christian American pensioners, why do they want to hurt you? Because, because they were robbed in by Kessler and Daphne Caruana Galizia, who, was one of, who is one of my arch enemies in Malta. I mean, this is, this is all, this is all another, another Kessler, Kessler steam. Something you also have to explain to me is mm -hmm. this strange nexus between uh, John Daly, Silvio Summit, and this lawyer named Gail Kimberly. So Gail Kimberly and Josef Galia both worked for the Lotteries and Gaming Authority in Malta. They no longer do. Um, they had an affair. Um, Josef Galia is very close to Silvio Zamit and also very close to John Daly. In fact, I have a photo which I published of them traveling in Italy together. Josef Galia, Silvio Zamit and John Daly. Gail Kimberley's involvement was tangential. She became involved simply because she was having an affair with Josef Galia and then later was subject to blackmail. She couldn't but, say. But she was the one who was in contact with the yes, Swedish match? Yes. 
she got in touch with Swedish Match as an independent consultant. They, would not, they wouldn't have known that she was sleeping with Josef Galia, who is a part of a whole cabal with John Dalia and Silvio Zamid. I had a very brief conversation with Gail Kibbele uh -huh. on the phone. Uh -huh. And she did not want to uh, meet with us, talk to us. And I said, but why, you know? Mm -hmm. And then she said, um, no, because they are powerful people, she said. Something in that line. When you mentioned Samit and Yosef, Yosef Galia, she, she sounds uh, afraid. But you wouldn't have said Zambit was powerful. Zambit is not powerful here. You met Zambit. Yeah, yeah. We met him. What, 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 what is that? You're not going to... Do not... Uh... It, it's a naked woman. It's she. It's Kimberly? Don't say nothing because of the cameras. Because it's illegal. These, those are to show you, to show my evidence for the court. Mm -hmm. Because I have all the evidence, you know? Hello? This is uh, journalist Mats Brugger calling um, for Gail Kimberly. Yes, this is Gail. I have been to Moses several times, uh, speaking with uh, Silvio Summit. Yeah. Summit. He, he has, he walks around with this uh, folder with everything. Who? Oh, Silvio Summit? Uh, Silvio Summit walks around with this photo, this file, which uh, contains everything that, according to him, proves how innocent he is. And inside that file is a picture of you in your underwear. Oh my god, seriously? When did they take pictures of me in my underwear? <sighs> no, I was not aware. Um, and you see, it is making me very anxious. I'm sorry, but. I don't want to discuss this anymore. I have no idea. They fabricated emails. They've done. Can, can I ask you, what, was was he blackmailing you? Uh, I can, can I ask you? This is just to get the facts straight. Um, but I I really need to go. I, I can't. Um, anyways, I am. No, back. thank you am, for your work. It's from a holiday or in Italy or. I mean, that's a picture. Okay. Yeah that I take. I have thousands of pictures with people. People yeah. to come to me, we're in parties and things like that, and I will, no, they take pictures. That's it. But there, there's no, there's no closeness. I, no, I don't have any business dealings with Zalmit. I mean, I don't have any, nothing, understand? And Zalmit never represented me in anything, never. Jeg har skrevet mere med kilden. No. Remember, you are dealing with a real businessman now, not a fool. First you sent me a small sample Hvad, of... Hvad skal du? You are dealing with what? A real businessman now. Not a fool. Er det dig, der er real businessman? Ja. No funny, no money. Siger du? Ja. No funny, no money? Send me sample of material. John Dalia også skrev til mig. Han skriver, I thank you for the opportunity to talk about the Bahamas and crash the insinuations and defamation that were being banded about by Kessler, Daphne Caruana, Galicia and their cohorts. Kan du ikke se, at det ligesom spidser til nu, fordi at der lige ved, vi er ved at være ved slutningen. Men så siger du, at det er ham. At han er... Øh... Dimitri. Der er ikke nogen pakke. Der er ikke noget materiale. Der er kun os to. Det er slut. 
Mes. Kom nu, i stedet for at stå på en telefon. Nu har kilden skrevet igen. Ej, hold nu op. Please allow me to call when I reach Europe. I am positive we shall be friends forever after this. Yes. Det er Dalit, der siger farvel igennem Dimitri. Looking forward to being Gud, du kommer til at best friends with you. Nu, nu slutter det med en best friends forever. Best friends forever. Dimitri, what kind of proof do you have that John Dahl was targeted? Proof. This is from inside information and from intelligence sources. Uh, that isn't much I can say right now because it is very sensitive. Um, is John Dali in danger? John Dali in danger. Not really. Can I ask, do you work for yes. Giovanni Kessler? No, no. Do you work for Russian intelligence? No, I don't work for Russian intelligence. No, no, no. That is out of the question. Are you Russian at all? I'm Ukrainian. Ukrainian. 